In 1931, the Forbidden City faced its greatest threat. The Japanese army attacked northeastern China and set up a puppet state called Manchu Kuo. To legitimize their rule, the Japanese installed Puyi, the last emperor of China, as the first emperor of Manchu Kuo. With little more than the Great Wall between Beijing and the Japanese, the Palace Museum was in danger. To save its treasures, the curators came up with an extraordinary plan. They would leave Beijing and take the entire contents of the museum with them. The evacuation of the Palace Museum treasures began on the night of February 5th, 1933. Wooden handcarts were loaded with crates of relics and taken to the railway station. A staff member of the Palace Museum recalled what happened that night. It was very quiet. There was no sound except for the cards. No other sound. No one spoke, no one sang. Everybody felt cold, sad. No one knew when the treasures would be brought back or even where they were going. The evacuation was so hasty that they left even before the final destination had been decided. A staff member joked. It was like looking for a graveyard while carrying the coffin. But it was no laughing matter. It's not easy hiding the contents of the biggest palace complex on Earth. There were too many relics to store them in one place, so they were split up. Documents were stored in Nanjing, the nationalist capital. The other treasures were sent to Shanghai. In 1937, all-out war began. The Japanese quickly occupied Beijing. As they threatened Nanjing, they forced a renewed flight of the treasures. This time, over 13,000 crates of artifacts were hastily sent west. They were divided into three groups. The convoys took different routes, often only a step ahead of the Japanese. When the Japanese caught up with the place of temporary refuge, the relics would be moved even deeper into the interior. One convoy found refuge in this cave in Guizhou. The relics stayed hidden underground for six years. Eventually, all the convoys found sanctuary in remote Sichuan province. It was not only the cultural relics that were at stake, so too were the relics escorts, and not just from bombs. It was not a nice job to be an escort. If the cultural relics were bombed, the escort would be held responsible. But could he stop the bombing? No, he could not. 